Good morning, friends. How are you doing? Does anybody know who this is? This is baby Sadie with her sister Ellie. And baby Sadie is scheduled to be baptized coming up on Sunday, September 20th at a special outside service. You know, babies are exciting things. There's few things that bring us more happiness than the birth of a new baby. And for weeks before a baby is born, parents um, make sure that they will have everything they need to take care of the baby, right? So they may buy sleepers so that the baby has something warm to wear when the baby sleeps at night, or they might buy cute blankets for the baby uh, to keep the baby warm and swaddle the baby, or they might buy one of these. This is a pacifier in my house. This is called a pap-pap or maybe they buy toys so the baby has something to play with, or maybe they even buy one of these. Does anybody know what this is? If you don't, ask, ask the adults in the room, they'll tell you, it's kind of disgusting, but it's fun. Anyway, um, so after the baby is born as well, care is making, taken to make sure the baby continues to have everything it needs to grow into a strong and healthy child. Good parents will do everything they can to keep their baby safe. What are some things that your parents do to keep you safe? Uh-huh, uh-huh, that's right. So they may make you wear a seatbelt when you ride in a car to keep you safe or teach you to look both ways before you cross a street or they'll buy you a, a bike helmet to keep you safe when you ride your bike. Those are all ways that your parents or caretakers, um, things they might do to keep you safe. Those are all great ideas. So our Bible story today is about a little baby boy who was born at a very, very dangerous time. And we'll see some amazing things that his mother does to keep him safe and make sure that he will have the opportunity to grow and learn and have the best of everything in life. And you might have heard this story before, but let's listen again to the story of baby Moses. Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, was afraid. He was rich and powerful and scared. What could he be scared of? Well, strangely enough, Pharaoh was scared of God's people, the Hebrews. He thought there were too many of them, and he was afraid that they would try to become more powerful than he was. So to make sure the Hebrews had no power, Pharaoh made them his slaves and ordered them to work very hard. Even worse, he demanded that all of the Hebrew baby boys should be drowned in the Nile River. Because of this, God's people were terribly afraid too. In fact, everyone in Egypt was afraid. During this fearful, fearful time, a baby boy was born to a Hebrew mother. She loved her baby boy, and of course she wanted him to live. The baby's mother kept him safe by making a floating basket for him. She put her baby inside the basket and hid it in the water and plants at the edge of the Nile River. The baby's big sister, Miriam, hid near the shore and watched over the basket. What happened next was really amazing. Pharaoh's daughter came down to the river to take a bath. She saw the basket among the water and plants and asked her servant to go get it. When she opened the basket, she was surprised to see a baby boy crying. Hmm, this must be one of the Hebrews' children, said Pharaoh's daughter. He's awfully cute. Wouldn't be, it be fun to keep him? Aha, thought Miriam. I can help her. Miriam bravely stepped out of her hiding place. I could probably find someone to help take care of that baby for you until he's a little older, she said. That would be perfect, said Pharaoh's daughter. Miriam was excited to tell her mother the news. The baby's mother took good care of him. When he was old enough, he went to live with Pharaoh's daughter. Miriam and her mother prayed that he would be safe with her. I think I will name him Moses, said Pharaoh's daughter, because I took him out of the water. Moses lived in Pharaoh's palace until he grew up to be a man. During that time, life became worse and worse for the Hebrews. Eventually, however, Moses helped free God's people so that they could leave Egypt. Now there was something besides fear for God's people. There was hope. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What an amazing story of a mother's love for her child. Now, many of us know about how Moses grew up to become one of the greatest leaders for the people Israel. 
And it all started with a little baby hidden in the bulrushes down by the Nile River. Of course, Moses had some help along the way, right? Who did Moses' mother send to keep an eye on him when she placed him in the basket and put him down at the edge of the Nile River? Does anybody know? Shout it out. That's right, Miriam, his big sister. Now, Miriam was probably about your age. I like to think of her as about seven or eight. And I think she was really brave. What do you think? Do you think, though, she wanted to sit there all day and just watch over that basket? Probably not. That's almost a, kind of a boring job, but it was an important job. Now, raise your hand if you are a big brother or a big sister and have been asked to do something to help your little sister or little brother and you really didn't want to do it. Adults, you can raise your hand, too. Right? Lots of you. But this was an important job because she was keeping her little brother Moses safe. She was also really, really brave. How was big sister Miriam brave? Well, first of all, she comes out of her hiding place to speak to an actual princess. And then she tells the princess that she could get someone to help nurse the baby and raise the baby until he was older. And then she goes and gets Moses' own mother. So Miriam was pretty smart too. You know, God can use even children your age to help keep people safe. God may have important jobs for you, jobs that may, might even seem boring at first, but who knows? They may be more important than they first seem. And also, just like Moses' mom wanted to keep him safe, God wants to keep us safe too. So he puts people in our lives to watch out for us. This week, though, I want you to think about ways that you can be a helper and watch out for others. Maybe that means taking care of a younger brother or sister or sibling. Or maybe, because we live in this time with the virus that I'm sure you've heard about, you can wear one of these, right? A mask. This keeps your germs from getting out to other people. And if we all wear this, this can help us defeat the virus so that we can get back to doing the things we love to do. Or maybe if you go out, you've been told about how we need to keep separate and keep distance to keep our germs away from one another, to again, to keep people safe. But you're pretty smart and pretty creative and imaginative, so I bet you can think of other ways that God could use you to keep people safe during this difficult time. And so I want you to think and pray about that this week. But let's end with a prayer. I'll say a line. You guys can repeat it after me. Let's pray. Dear God, dear God, thank you, thank you for the story of Moses, for the story of Moses, and for reminding us, and for reminding us that you put people in our lives, that you put people in our lives to keep us safe, to keep us safe. Help us, help us to look out for others, to look out for others as you look out for us, as you look out for us. Thank you, thank you for your love, for your love and protection and protection. In Jesus' name we pray, in Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen.